Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window on this Wednesday and a kind of a mixed bag, typical spring day once again. A cold front moved through. That's what kicked up the wind yesterday. So that brought us some clouds and cooler temperatures, but what a beautiful shot high up on Billy Goat Mountain, looking down at the towns of Pateras and Brewster, and a few clouds up that way too, but what a beautiful shot looking down there. And the seven day forecast as we move into the end of the week, of course, apple blossom begins tomorrow, and it looks like a pretty decent start to apple blossom, 59 with partly cloudy skies. Saturday, a 50-50 chance for rain as we get into the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade on Saturday. Sunday, a bit of a break, and then our best chance of rain on Monday with highs staying between 60 and 65 and we will have much more weather coming up a little bit later on. Now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. A mother and son died of gunshot wounds in their Lake Chelan area home Friday and the Chelan County Sheriff's Office says the case remains under investigation. The dramatic shooting incident on Methouse Street two weeks ago has now become a murder case. And Chelan County is seeking to dismiss a lawsuit over alleged delays in the Mission Ridge expansion. But first, our top story tonight, a male resident of a mobile home that was destroyed in a fire yesterday afternoon near the Kashmir Dryden Airport suffered first and second degree burns and was transported to Central Washington Hospital in Wenatchee. First degree burns are the least serious. A woman who also lived in the home reporting having difficulty breathing and was treated at the scene. Chelan County Fire District 6 Chief Phil Mosher said it's his understanding that the couple were inside the double wide mobile home when the fire in the 900 block of Rings Rood Road started at about 1.30 p.m. The fire district reported there were flames from the fire shooting as high as 50 feet. Mosher said the cause of the fire is under investigation. He also said the couple were receiving assistance from family members who lived nearby. Though the fire was under control shortly before 3 p.m., crews remained on scene for an extensive overhaul. A mother and son died of gunshot wounds in their Lake Chelan area home Friday, and the Chelan County Sheriff's Office says the case remains under investigation. Just after 2 p.m. Friday, deputies responded to a residence in the Apple Acres Mobile Home Park near Lake Chelan Airport after being contacted by a family member who had found the victims. The two were identified Tuesday as Lindell Burkhardt, 63 years old, and her 26-year-old son, Cole Robin Robison. Both lived at the home and their bodies were found in a bedroom. The sheriff's office said they don't believe anyone else was involved in that incident. Well, the dramatic shooting incident on Methouse Street two weeks ago has now become a murder case. Yesterday, prosecutors charged the two suspects with second-degree murder and the death of 21-year-old David Loreni Vasquez, who was shot in the head on April 18th while driving in the 800 block of South Methouse Street. Vasquez died from his injury the following day. Police say 23-year-old Benito Eduardo Licea and 25-year-old Andrew Francis Morrow carried out the shooting. Both sped away from the scene and were caught later that day after multiple police agencies pursued them through East Wenatchee. They remain held in the Chelan County Jail. Police say the shooting may have arisen from a dispute between Vasquez and Morrow over a girlfriend. Both Morrow and Lisea must now be arraigned on the murder charges and related criminal counts. Well, an Okanagan County judge is now considering whether to dismiss the lawsuit brought against Chelan County by the owners of Mission Ridge Ski Area. Judge Robert Grimm heard arguments yesterday presiding over the lawsuit as a visiting judge in Douglas County Court. Resort owner Jerry Shrikovich wants to add a new lodge, townhouses, duplexes, and outdoor amphitheater as part of a 500-acre expansion at the Ridge. He claims Chelan County has conspired and interfered illegally with the development and says unnecessarily de delays in its permitting process have cost him almost $7 million. The county denies those claims and says the case should be thrown out of court. 
Grimm is expected to issue a written decision on whether to let the case proceed to a jury trial. Well, when we come back, good news in the latest job report from the Washington State Employment Security Department. We'll tell you about that. Representative Dan Newhouse questions the VA about failures in patient management software. Free firewood permits will be available starting Monday for the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest. And the Eastmont School District will provide transitional kindergarten for four-year-olds beginning next school year. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. You've got a lot to do today. While you're out and about, remember to dispose of your unused medications safely and anonymously. It's a simple act that makes your home a safer place. Next time you're at the pharmacy, just place them in the drop box. To find a location, visit medproject.org. Don't miss the 2022 Lakeshaland Wine and Jazz Festival. You'll enjoy a wide variety of jazz, breathtaking lake and vineyard views, and fabulous wine. The festival features 50 shows at 14 wineries and venues over four days. Imagine a musical tour around the beautiful Lakeshaland Wine Valley. Grab your friends and get your tickets to the 2022 Lakeshaland Wine and Jazz Festival, May 19th through the 22nd. It's gone on four decades of doing business in the Wenatchee Valley. And I want people to know that it matters. It matters to me that people choose to do business with us. It matters that people trust us, you know, trust us. That matters more than anything. Welcome back. And in other news, good news in the latest job report from the Washington State Employment Security Department. The March 22, 2022 unemployment rate at 5.6% was one full percentage point less than in March of 2021. Year over year, unemployment rates have declined in the Wenatchee Metropolitan Statistical Area for the past 12 consecutive months. Total non-farm employment netted 2,200 more jobs than the 44,200 jobs tallied in March of 2021, a 5% increase. Another encouraging economic sign is that the Wenatchee civilian labor force in March of this year was up 2.4% than the labor force back in March of 2020. This indicates that the local labor force has rebounded to the pre-COVID area levels. Lawmakers and veterans advocates have complained for months about a new health care management system that's delaying and interfering with medical appointments in the Inland Northwest. Now an internal VA inspector's report confirms the problem. The computer system built by Kerner Systems was supposed to improve handling of VA medical records for patients in Wenatchee, Spokane, Idaho, and Montana. Instead, it suffered frequent crashes and a report issued on Monday by the VA Inspector General says the agency did not comply with federal purchasing rules when it bought the system for $10 billion in 2020. Fourth District Congressman Dan Newhouse spoke with VA officials about the issue in a committee meeting on Tuesday. If we in the state of Washington have the distinction or the honor of being guinea pigs in this in this uh, electronic records rollout. We just have to be certain that the issues that we have seen do not happen again in any other place in the country. And I gotta tell you, um, Dr. Durham, what I heard today, I think this is probably, if not the, one of the most scathing IG reports I've ever heard. And it should be taken very, very seriously by you and everybody that works with you. Um, if it's issues exist, obviously they do and they haven't been addressed fully. Uh, we have got to be certain that we get this right in Spokane and in Walla Walla. And until we do, we should not do this in 
in my humble opinion, in any other location in the country. Free firewood permits will be available starting Monday for the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest. Those with the free permits are allowed to use the wood for cutting, manufacturing, or other processing, but not for resale. Regional forester Glenn Casamasa said the new program will benefit people who rely on firewood as their primary heat source, while also clearing material that otherwise would have cost the Forest Service to burn or remove. The permits will be available at Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest Ranger District offices and are valid through December 31st. In addition to the permit, woodcutters will need to have a copy of the regulations and map on hand while cutting or hauling firewood. Well, the Eastmont School District is offering a new and free transitional kindergarten program for four-year-olds. Transitional Kindergarten, or TK, is a full-day, Monday through Friday program that will be available at Cascade, Grant, and Lee Elementary Schools. The classrooms will be overseen by Eastmont teachers and transportation will be available. To be eligible, children must be four years old by August 31st and must demonstrate need based on a district screening process. The district said space is limited, so registration should be made as soon as possible by calling 509-884-7169. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Right now is the best time to buy an RV. And the best place is Click It RV in Moses Lake. I drive a Click It RV. Right now, Click It RV has spring discounts that deliver you unbeatable savings. On travel trailers, kids' wheels, toy haulers, Class A or C motorhomes, both new and used, and more. Get the best deals and the lowest financing and the lowest price guarantee. I'm Richard Sherman, and we guarantee it. So don't miss the spring sale in Moses Lake. Get to Click It RV now. Are you going to be mad, bro? You probably already are. And check out all four Click It RV dealerships for your best locations. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, the Wenatchee School Board made a few momentous decisions Tuesday night. First, they'll soon divide the Wenatchee School District into four voting districts for future elections. Second, they voted to use the North Central Educational Service District to find an interim superintendent and hire an outside firm to find a permanent one. Current Superintendent Paul Gordon will depart the district effective June 30th. Teachers urge the board to promote Gordon's interim replacement from within the district. What is the harm in having WSD internal candidates lead us through the next year as we search for a permanent superintendent? With our, an internally chosen interim, the consistency would continue. The knowledge that we have someone who truly knows WSD, knows our programming, knows our diverse populations, knows our struggles, and knows where we are headed would allow us to continue to move forward with what we've been working to achieve for the past several years. We have been dealt a very challenging hand, and many of us are feeling very unsettled, inconsequential, unvalued, and disillusioned. It is extremely disconcerting that there is no mention of including WSD staff, admin, or community for input until October of 2022. This is a critically important process that does not need to be rushed. 
in my opinion, I think the onboarding has to start in May and we're at the 26th of April. I mean, if we're going to do listening sessions and introductions and, you know, that kind of thing, we, we don't have time to waste. We, we just do not. And the other way I put it, I feel a responsibility if we're going down this road to deliver the full package openly to everybody as soon as possible so they can work with it, know it, and, uh, and go ahead. You know, dragging something out for, say, another four weeks where we are in stasis, I'm not sure. Personally, I, I, I feel I don't want to put people through that um, and uh, unless there really is a, a communal opinion, there is a better way to do it. Time for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And I hope your Wednesday was a good one. A lot like yesterday, wasn't it? Just a little less wind. We talked about that being the case today. Saw a mixture of clouds and sun, but look how beautiful this shot is with all the greenery now. And it wasn't a bad day today. Unofficially 58 degrees at Pangborn Airport. 66 is our normal high temperature now. 86 our record set back in 1987. 37 this morning was our low. And that's six degrees below 43, which is normal for this time of year. 1970, our record low at 32 degrees. Sunrise, 541 this morning and sets tonight at 807. Let's take a look now at your Thursday temperatures. We will slowly move up as we get into your Friday weather beginning tomorrow. 61 for Moses Lake and Afreda, 60 in Quincy, maybe 60 in Wenatchee, probably upper 50s. Same for Kashmir, any at Chelan at 60. And OMAC, a beautiful one up that way at 61 degrees tomorrow. Taking a look at tonight, we'll see partly cloudy skies. There is an area of high pressure right over the top of us, but it's this low pressure off the coast that's really driving our weather. We're in a big trophy situation right now, so that's allowing some cooler air to move in. For your apple blossom start on Thursday, not too bad. Partly cloudy skies. We'll see seasonal temperatures with highs in the upper 50s. Getting you into Friday, the best day of our entire seven day forecast. Mostly sunny and warmer. High pressure still over top of us, keeping this area of low pressure at bay. And we're going to see highs on Friday in the mid 60s. So it should be beautiful for apple blossom. And then for the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade on Saturday, mostly cloudy. A 50 50 chance that some of this moisture will move up our way. I'm thinking a less chance for rain than I was the first two days this week with highs in the upper 50s for Saturday. For your Sunday, partly cloudy skies and warmer should be a nice one with high temperatures in the low to mid 60s. Getting you into Monday and the first day of our next work week, we will see once again a good chance for rain showers. Area of low pressure will move from the coast inland and boy, lots of Washington inundated with rain. Most of that will be around commute time for us on Monday with mostly cloudy skies and highs near 60 for Tuesday. Partly cloudy skies, a little bit warmer with high temperatures in the uh, mid 60s as that ridge comes up and over the Pacific Northwest. Maybe a little bit of wind for Tuesday as well, so keep that in mind before this next system moves in. And that looks like that will be about Wednesday night, possibly into Thursday. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast tonight. 38 degrees for overnight low. Not a too bad a couple of days to kick off apple blossom. 59 Thursday, 63 on Friday with mostly sunny skies. And then a 50 50 chance for rain on Saturday and 58. Nice for uh, Sunday and then more rain showers as we get you into Monday. 61 degrees warmer for Tuesday with highs then around 64. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this.
911. What is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me. It's my husband. I think he's had a something the matter with him. It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay, take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. Rivercom means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. One big inning and seven strikeouts from Logan Gilbert spelled an 8-4 win over Tampa Bay last night for the Mariners. Seattle took advantage of some miscues by the Rays defensively in a seven-run fourth inning to stake a big lead for starter Logan Gilbert. The right-hander pitched five and two-thirds of scoreless baseball to improve his record to 3-0 and on the season. Now the 1-2. Check swing, soft tapper, Choi comes home, spikes and passes it in. Winker scores, here comes Suarez, no flip home, and the Mariners get two. Hard hit, slammed into the gap in right center field. Toro is in to score, Murphy makes his way to third, is held there, it's an RBI double for Julio Rodriguez. First pitch swinging over Choi into right field. Murphy is in. Julio is right behind him. He scores standing. Meanwhile, on his way home, a headlong slide. Dylan Moore is safe all the way from first. France, first pitch swinging into left field. That brings home Frazier. It's 7 0 Mariners. Heavy shift on for Lau. He goes chasing after 96. Catcher for the A's. Upstairs, 97. And Franco is retired with the gas. Consecutive strikeouts from Logan Gilbert to begin his night. Second fewest innings worked all season. Hard chopper. Right there to Frazier. Little shovel pass to Crawford. And on to first for the double play. Rips through that high heater. Third strikeout from Logan Gilbert. Swings right through it, catching a lot of the plate. Logan Gilbert is fourth strikeout. Here's the payoff. Strike three call. Gilbert gets a call and picks up his fifth strikeout. Swing and a miss. The slider finishes a Rosarena. Here comes the payoff. Swing and a miss. You knew he was going to go right after him. Pretty good stuff there. Fourth consecutive win for the Mariners. Helped welcome back manager Scott Service, who is out for several games after testing positive for COVID. It's probably the most balance we've we've had as a team since I've been here. You know, our starting pitching has been very consistent. Our bullpen's pretty good. Uh, offensively, we're putting some things together, and we're starting to put some bigger innings together. So, um, and, and the length of our lineup uh, is a big plus to that too. You know, guys are are grinding through at bats, creating opportunities. And tonight, once they made a couple mistakes, and when the door was open, we just rushed through it and, and put a big number up there. Seattle and Tampa Bay are at it again right now. Marco Gonzalez going up against Drew Rasmussen. You can see the action on Root Sports Northwest. Well, the Seattle Kraken had little luck on the road last night, falling in Vancouver by a final of five to two. It was a Rude welcoming to the NHL for Jordan Decord, who was just called up with uh, Seattle's AHL affiliate in Charlotte. He was in net. Canucks scored three first period goals to stake an insurmountable lead. Kraken got goals in the second from Jordan Eberle and Morgan Geeky, but uh, Vancouver put the game away in the third. Seattle's back home to face LA. The Kings in town tonight, 7 o'clock at Climate Pledge Arena. That also on Root Sports Northwest. Well, the battle for first place in the Big Nine was intense last night. Big crowd. Wildcat Stadium, Eastmont hosting Wenatchee. And Tyler Wisen scored in the 15th minute to give Wenatchee the lead. And the Panthers got another goal in the second half off the foot of Marcos Bravo to post a 2-0 win. Sebastian Rog and Matt Wisen had the call here on the NCW Life Channel. Ramos and Vega. Vega and Wisen making a pass as he goes into the box. He goes, Wisen, 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 goal, 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 goal! There's the ball. Oh my goodness! Woo! And Mr. Mungia having to stretch. Whistle on the play, however. Action returns quickly. There's Malcolm, 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 Malcolm! And it sails wide and high. <laughs> Into the box now, Bravo. Good maneuver past the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper, who's open for the shot, and a brilliant save, brilliant save. Leon, 
trying to get a shot across. Mata on the mark. The header goal. Oh, my goodness. And and the referees say, well, the, the player was a lot. Go, 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 go. Cut the back line of Isma napping, and Winachi takes a 2 nothing lead. Yeah, and there's nothing weak about that shot, as I was just saying. But uh, that was a fantastic redirection on goal. Good low-driven hard ball in. Right-footed cross shot. The pivoting header by Malcolm, and it sails over the crossbar. There's Bravo. Bravo making some room. Weissen the shot. Weissen, Mendoza. What a brilliant save. Back, Sitio, good ball. Left-footed shot and a brilliant sweeping maneuver by the back line of Winechi. Bit of a mixer there. Can't quite clear the shot and Mungia with excellent reflexes. Ninth one, that would make it the ninth one overall. And there's the whistle that tells us that Wenatchee has taken this one by a score of two goals to nil. They're an excellent team, and they have a lot of weapons on their side, and I just felt like our the, the guys bought into the game plan we were after tonight and stuck with it for the full 80 minutes plus the injury time, and, and we got a positive result. We talked about finishing the chances we had. Felt we had a few others, but their goalkeeper stepped up big and made some beautiful saves in the first half, but that's big nun soccer at its best between the two teams, and... We anticipate this won't be the last time we see him this year. It was beautiful. 2-0 um, win, fantastic. And I got to uh, thank my defense for that because Corin, he did really good. And they're an amazing team, so it was a pretty close game. He's fast. Tyrell's fast. He's good. He's, it's always a good to get a good challenge, and he's always a good player. You want to play against the best, and I feel like he's one of the best in the league, so it was great guarding him. Wenatchee improved to 8-1 in Big Nine play to take sole possession of first place, while Eastmont dropped to 8-2. Other action on Tuesday, Othello dropped to Fred at 2-0. Quincy smashed Omax 7-0. Cascade had no trouble with Chelan, winning 5-1. Bridgeport bounced Okanagan 1-0. Oroville beat Liberty Bell 5-1. And Manson took care of Tenasket also by a score of 5-1. Les Schwab prep baseball scoreboard from yesterday. Let's run it down for you. Eastmont topped Sunnyside 5-2. Wenatchee down Davis 9-7. West Valley outlasted Moses Lake 5-3 and 10 innings to tie the Chiefs for first of the Big Nine. Uh, Okanagan quieted Quincy 14-2. Chelan crushed Cashmere 12-1. Brewster mauled Manson 19-0. Riverside Christian, a rude guest of Waterville Mansfield, handing the Shockers an 18-8 defeat. Prep fast pitch softball on Tuesday. Sunnyside surprised Eastmont 19-3. Ouch. When Anchi kept Davis winless in Big Nine play, winning 17-2. Cascade swept its doubleheader with Omak. Okanagan took two from Quincy. And Lake Roosevelt pounded Pateras 15 nothing Waterville Mansfield girls how about the Shockers remain undefeated on the season <laughs> that's correct 34 to 5 over so play that's a look at sports news I'm Eric Grandstrom Grant back to you Waterville Mansfield wow thank you Eric now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley Dan Thanks, Grant. On tomorrow's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, it is two of the cast members of The Wizard of Oz, the annual uh, music theater Wenatchee Apple Blossom Festival musical. Matthew Pippin, Kelly, Kelly, Matthew, what are we talking about come tomorrow? Uh, the, the nightmare that is our show. No, it's, it's, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Kelly is the Wicked Witch of the West, me is the Tin Man, and we're having a wonderful time. It is an American classic, The Wizard of Oz, and it's coming here to the America Performing Arts Center starting on May 4th. The traditional Apple Blossom musical is back in person right here on tomorrow's Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Grant, back to you. Dan and friends, thank you very much. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.